Hey Tekken players, hope you're all doing well. So I made a similar video back in Tekken 7, but thought I'd make an update for Tekken 8, and that's how to improve your king execution when playing on a pad. Now, as I've said before, I'm no Brawl Pro, Federer or Jess Andy when it comes to king execution, but having made multiple combo videos and tutorials, I do have enough of the basics down to point out where I can explain to others how to do things a little bit easier. So we're going to start with some basics and move our way all the way up to the more advanced techniques. These are all basic drills I like to practice when warming up before going online with King. Before I get a load of concerned comments under the video, I do play Claw and I know this looks a bit awkward but it's because I have to have my hand up on the desk for the camera whereas normally I'd have it on my lap so don't worry I'm not suffering arthritis just yet. Now, I've been correctly called out for my self-promotion as basically being a crime against humanity. So I urge you now, make sure you do not drop a like on this video and you should not, absolutely not subscribe to the channel. Right, so with all that done, grab your pad and let's get into it. Okay, this is you. And I know this is you, because if you don't get this misinput, then you're not a real king main. Getting a down jab instead of a full crouch down forward 2 is a rite of passage for king mains. So how do we avoid it? Well the key method that I use is to make sure you're crouching by holding down back and not just down. And then slide your thumb forward to down forward to get the input. Now this may mean the input takes a few hundredths of a second slower, but it will make it far more reliable in my opinion. So set the dummies to do a big low and practice punishing with a clean full crouch down forward 2. Ten frames fast, tracks to both sides, and 70 damage moves back to a wall. This is why Giant Swing is by far the best throw in the game, and why you must, must master it if you're going to be a proper King player. But despite the disgusting propaganda going around across YouTube about King being easy, this input is one of the harder inputs to master, especially if you're very new to Tekken. Now, the key to landing this, outside of just doing loads of practice, is I find if you slow the motion right down and really emphasise the forward and the back and then the half circle forward. A bit like learning to wave dash, it's better to go much slower at first and then get your inputs correct than it is to try to rush it and go too fast. Once you have the accuracy down, as an optional extra you can now try to show off and see how many blue sparks versions you can do in a row. I have made a full guide about how to land King's blue spark throws which I'll leave a link to. Now, knowing how to land King's throws is important, but knowing how to buff them is absolutely critical to ensure your throws come out as quickly as possible to avoid the opponent mashing, stepping or ducking. Again, I have a separate guide on how to do this, but the TLDR, practice throw buffing and all the various moves and strings you find best to buff the throws from. I'd suggest jabs and jab strings as well as his lows and his bottom block mids. Now, while running moves are much easier to do in Tekken 8 due to the new mechanics, but you should still try to learn to do an instant shining wizard for the following reasons. Number 1. The quicker the delay, the more it will look like a giant swing input. If there's even a few steps in the run, it will flag this as being a shining wizard so your opponent is more likely to break the throw. Second, if you want to get the max damage combos, then two jab into shining wizard is the way to go, so you need to learn how to do this quickly. And finally, because this is how you get the blue spark version, which just looks absolutely badass, let's be honest. So the way I try to practice this is doing it straight from a full crouch down 4-2, where it seems to give you the most leniency in terms of timing. Then after landing a hop kick, which is a bit trickier, And then finally, trying it after a two jab, as this will help you with the combo training. Finally, to finish on, as I alluded to, the max damage combo ender is to run up into two jab and then ISW. I'd practice this on multiple combo routes, as they sort of dictate the first part, i.e. if you're quite far away then you have to enter the running stance and jab straight away, whereas if you're quite close you have to delay the jab, or is it all whiff? 
etc etc Landing it after counting it down 4, 2, 1 is probably the hardest you can do because you have to deep dash and then sidewalk into studio. So if you can master this then give yourself a big pat on the back. Thanks all for watching. Hope this helps you work on your King Pad execution. Remember though, make sure you don't drop any likes and if this has helped you, then don't you dare hit the subscribe button. Thanks everyone, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.